Hi, I'm Dr. Craig Canapari, and today I'm going to talk about the importance of timing bedtime in sleep training. When people come to see me in sleep clinic, they have usually tried to sleep train their children and have had difficulty or been unsuccessful for various reasons. When I'm counseling a family to start sleep training, I find that the, the, the most important trick that I have in my arsenal, my, my secret sauce, as it were, is manipulating the child's bedtime, specifically moving the bedtime later. In the sleep training use literature, this is referred to as bedtime fading. When we're using bedtime fading, we're usually talking about moving the child's bedtime 30 to 60 minutes later from their current bedtime with the idea that they're going to be significantly sleepier when they're put down in their crib or bed. If in the past you've tried unsuccessfully to sleep train your child, let's say that they cried or they fussed or they fought you for an hour and eventually you laid down with them until they fell asleep, if you move the bedtime later, it does not necessarily mean that you are going to have another hour of fussing starting one hour later. Typically, the children are more tired and they're more likely to fall asleep on their own and to learn that crucial self-soothing skill of falling asleep on their own, which is the goal of sleep training as it leads to more pleasant bedtimes uh, and better sleep continuity at night and your child and you awakening refreshed in the morning. Now, practically speaking, this means that we may be sleep depriving your child a little bit during this process. You might find that they're a little bit irritable in the morning or even hard to get out of bed. I usually recommend that parents keep their child's wake time constant, with the exception being if your child is getting up at an ungodly hour, like say at five in the morning, it's okay to let them sleep a little bit later. Uh, but if they're getting up at seven in the morning and you need them to get up at that time so you can get them to school or daycare, it's appropriate to keep them waking up at the same time. You also want to make sure that they're not napping past 4 p.m. and also avoid what one of my colleagues used to call sneaky sleep, which is falling asleep in the stroller or the car seat uh, in the late afternoon. Now, sometimes you may not have a choice uh, in this if you're picking up your child at 5 or 6 o'clock and driving home and then falling asleep in the car. If you're by yourself, there's nothing you can do. But if, but if you have another child in the car, typically an older sibling will be more than happy to keep your younger child awake uh, so that they're really tired at bedtime. Now let's use a practical example. Um, most children between ages 1 and 5 will need between 12 and 14 hours of sleep a night. Let's say for the sake of argument your child takes a two-hour nap during the day. Um, it's a good rule of thumb that they should be getting about 11 hours of sleep a night. So say sleeping from 8 p.m. to 7 a.m. If you're trying to sleep train a child on this schedule, we'll move the bedtime to 8.30 or 9 o'clock uh, with the goal that it'll help them fall asleep on their own uh, without you intervening. Once they start falling asleep consistently on their own, I will have the parents start moving their bedtime earlier by 10 or 15 minutes every few days till you get back to your target bedtime of 8 p.m. Now, if you're moving your bedtime earlier and you find that you get to 8.30 and when you go earlier you get a lot of resistance, that's okay. That uh, seems to be the appropriate bedtime for your child. There's actually some research out there that, that children who fuss and resist bedtime quite a bit may have a later body clock and that moving their bedtime later will lead to a more uh, pleasant and easy bedtime and process of falling asleep for them. So I'm going to post a link to that study on the blog. If you have any follow-up questions, please reach me on Twitter uh, at Dr. Canapari or on my website, drcraigcanapari.com. Thanks.